urethral strictures are scars of the urethra. That's the tube that brings urine out from the bladder. It's not just a scar of the urethra, however. It's actually a scar of all the tissue that surrounds the urethra as well. We pick this up in one of two ways. We can diagnose this by a special type of x-ray we do called a retrograde urethrogram. And in this study, we fill the urethra with contrast and we identify the location and the length of the urethral stricter. The other way we pick these up is by cystoscopy. That's where I put a small camera into the urethra and I can actually visualize the stricture itself and see how severe it is. Patients with urethral strictures often feel like they have a hard time getting urine out. They have to strain to urinate, they have to push really hard, or they might notice some dribbling at the end of their urinary stream. Oftentimes, they'll see their primary care physician or a number of urologists before they come to see me. Once they come to see me, I'll do a series of tests to see if this is actually a urethral stricture or not. And if it is, then there are several treatment options that we have available. The two types of treatment options for these patients are cystoscopic, so we put a small camera into the urethra and we can dilate the urethral stricture. And the definitive treatment for urethral stricture is urethroplasty. There are two types of urethroplasties. The first type is called an anastomotic urethroplasty. For an anastomotic urethroplasty, we cut out the scarred segment of the urethra and sew the two healthy ends together. We create a nice open lumen for urine to pass. The other type of urethroplasty is called the buccal graft urethroplasty. In that, we take a piece of the lining of the cheek and graft that into the urethra to create a nice wide open lumen to allow urine to pass more easily. The patients I most commonly see for urethroplasties are patients who've had pelvic or perineal trauma of some sort, either a motor vehicle accident leading to a pelvic fracture or other pelvic trauma that's caused the urethra to scar down. I also see other patients who have developed urethral strictures for other reasons, such as inflammatory conditions like lichen sclerosis. For urethroplasties, the main risks are incontinence and erectile dysfunction. People can also notice some numbness or tingling of the genitalia. Part of this is due to the original trauma that caused the urethral stricture in the first place, but these, are, these should always be kept in mind with this type of surgery. There are a variety of urinary diversions that we perform. The most common urinary diversions I perform are for people who have bladder cancer, people who have spinal cord injuries, or adults who had complex congenital uh, diseases as children. The types of urinary diversions we perform include using intestinal segments to increase the size of the bladder or to allow patients to be able to catheterize themselves through, through a small channel in the abdomen. So we can use the appendix, or the small intestine to create a little channel by which patients can get urine out safely. Yeah, there are both incontinent and continent diversions. Incontinent diversions allow urine to pass freely into an appliance that would be at the side of their, of their abdomen. Continent diversions have no leaking whatsoever. Whenever patients want to get urine out, typically every three to four hours, they place a catheter in through the catheterizable channel, and that allows urine to drain through this catheter. For urinary diversions, the main risks are intestinal obstruction, intestinal leak, and stricturing or stenosis of the catheterizable stoma. For patients who have urethral stricture disease or who require urinary diversions, it's important that you see somebody who has experience and training in this area. Within New England, there are a handful of people who've been specifically trained in this area. At Brigham and Women's Hospital, we have particular expertise in patients who have complex urogenital diseases and the reconstructions required to, to treat them. Here at Brigham and Women's Hospital, we're performing cutting edge research, looking at the outcomes associated with these types of procedures. We're also looking at why these diseases occur and new ways of treating them as well. We're at the forefront of using minimally invasive techniques to treat complex urological diseases. Only a handful of places in the country are doing this currently. Traditionally, these diseases were treated with a large open incision, and people required a hospital stay of many days. With robotic surgery, we can shorten that length of stay and minimize the pain and discomfort associated with surgery. At Brigham and Women's Hospital, we have a team of robotically trained surgeons who are helping patients shorten their hospital stay and get back to the activities that they enjoy sooner and with less pain.